Hello, welcome back. I now want to tell you about uh, Lyapunov stability theorems. So this is, we're just going to write down um, the, we're going to just capture the intuition that we had from the previous lecture a little bit more rigorously in a few mathematical statements and pin the various notions of stability to the stability definitions that we saw previously. So let's suppose that again we have some state space model, um, x dot is equal to f of x, and we have a Lyapunov function, and now we're going to say that the Lyapunov function is defined on some region of the state space um, omega. So let's say we have some region here, and this is just some uh, bounded subset of our state space where our Lyapunov function is defined. And what the Lyapunov stability results are going to do is they're going to just let us to talk about stability on these regions, uh, omega, and we'll consider some different ones. Um, so, what is the what, what are the set of Lyapunov stability theorems? Well, I'll just start to write them out. And so, what we're going to be dealing with is we're going to say we're given some uh, nonlinear system. Um, x dot is equal to f of x. And we also have some Lyapunov function v uh, that is defined on, on our region of the state space omega. Um, and now, what conditions do we need in order to be able to make some conclusions about stability? Well, the first thing that we need is that v of x is equal to zero when x is equal to x star. So this is just saying that the value of our Lyapunov function at our equilibrium point, which on this picture is at the origin, is equal to zero. The second condition is that the value of our Lyapunov function is larger than zero. And this is for all x in omega except x is equal to x star. So we've said that um, at x star the value is equal to zero. It needs to be bigger than zero everywhere else in our region omega, which must also include our equilibrium point. So these are our sort of two basic properties for um, the Lyapunov function that we saw last time. And then we argued that if something involving the gradient of v, when we take the dot product with x dot, and so what is x dot? Well, x dot is just f of x. So if we look at the dot product of the gradient of v with x dot, if it's less than zero, less than or equal to zero, um, for all x in uh, omega, then this implies that x star is stable. And remember that stability was our weakest, um, the, the stable was our weakest stability notion. Um, the, the ideas of asymptotic stability and global asymptotic stability were stronger. And all this means um, more formally is that if we start in this region omega, we're going to stay there. Um, so why have I left a space here? Well, this uh, thing is often given its own name. And so v dot is defined to be this dot product here. Um, so these are the conditions for stability um, using the Lyapunov functions. And if you remember here, this was just corresponding to well, grad v was just these vectors that were tangential, you know, I haven't said that last time, which are perpendicular to the level curves of the Lyapunov function. If I dot product those with my um, directions for x dot, well, if this is negative, it just means that we're moving to a contour of lower energy. So being less than or equal to means we could be moving along the contour, but we're never moving away uh, and getting further away from the equilibrium point.
Um, and so how does this get strengthened? Well, if we also have um, condition four, v dot of x strictly less than zero for all x in omega again except at x star, then um, x star is locally asymptotically stable. So locally asymptotically stable. And more than that, it's what this means is given our region omega, if we start in omega, we will stay in omega and will converge to our equilibrium point. Um, so we actually get a region of attraction coming um, with this uh, with, through our Lyapunov function. And then finally, we also have the extension to globally asymptotically stable. So if also um, omega is equal to r n, and this is just fancy language for saying that our region omega is the entire um, state space. So all of this, for all of this stuff here, omega had to be some bounded region of the state space. We're now going to look at global extent. Um, and also, so if we also have this and v of x goes to infinity as the, the length of the vector x, which is just this square root of x1 squared plus xn squared goes to infinity. So as we move further and further away from uh, the, uh, the origin, um, the value of our Lyapunov function gets bigger and bigger and bigger and it grows without bounds. So if we have these things, uh, then x star is globally asymptotically stable. And you, this is a kind of an extra technical condition. It's explained um, in a bit more detail in the lecture notes. I don't really want to get into it in too much detail. I mean, if you think about it, it's nice to be able to say that this system is globally asymptotically stable, but I mean, this, a statement like this is actually completely meaningless in any physical way. So whatever space your system is going to be living in, it's going to be bounded. I mean, we don't often worry about the evolution of systems in the context of their behavior in the entire universe. And even if we did, um, it still wouldn't be truly infinite. So this is kind of like a nice little mathematical extension. And um, uh, there's an example showing why you need this condition in the lecture notes. Um, but here you have it. Uh, these are our Lyapunov uh, stability theorems going from the weakest, so just looking at stability, through to the strongest, which is global asymptotic stability. And the only real meaningful distances, uh, um, the differences uh, come through whether or not we need um, inequality, yeah, less than or equals, or strict inequalities um, on our v dot term. And this is just telling us whether we were guaranteed to move to a contour of lower energy, or we might just be staying along the contour where we were before. Um, so now we'll, let's go do some examples.